Hi, you guys. Welcome back to another first impression video. If you're new here, this is the video series where I take a look at an entire sewing pattern collection, whether that's a new release from Big Four or like an entire collection from an indie designer. Um, today, I think we're rounding out the fall collections from the Big Four. We're we'll taking a look at McCall's. Um, so we're going to take a look at all of these new patterns. We're going to look at them for fit, um, fabric choices. We're going to look a little bit um, at just kind of like talk about overall design, you know, all that kind of stuff. So if you're into looking at sewing patterns and you like doing it with a friend, <laughs> this is the video for you. I have a whole playlist with dozens and dozens of these for you to watch if you want to check that out. Um, it'll be at the end of the video or in the description box. Okay, so first things first, we've got Brandy Joan. Um, I think Brandy Joan is doing really well at McCall's. Um, from what I understand, she is going to be, she was posting something about, it, she made it sound like it was something other than just this, just her brand for McCall's. Maybe this is already different. I don't know. She made it seem like it was something extra special than what she'd normally been doing this year. But um, I think her, her patterns are definitely resonating, which is great. Um, this is a sew along for these overalls. So that's cool. Um, this is overalls, a true wardrobe staple. This style is sure to turn from season to season. Oh, sure to stun. Okay. Floor length overalls. <laughs> okay. With adjustable racer back straps. Overalls feature bib pocket, front buckles, side snap closures, and front and back pockets. All right. Overall sewing patterns aren't anything new or fresh for sewing patterns. There's a gajillion to choose from. Um, it's just like the little details that were that you decide on whether you like or not. So, for example, this one having this here, that's a very unique Brandy Joan um, design detail, kind of giving it like a little bit of a country western vibe. Also, her pocket here, the way that this is like pleated um, with this little flap. She's also got lots of rivets, which you don't see in overalls very often. Um, and then, like they said, it's floor length, but she has hers rolled up because she's a cool girl. Um, but yeah, otherwise pretty straightforward. I guess the, you know, Mimi G has some that are more close fitting. Um, there's flared versions. Hers tend to be a little bit sort of, um, like boyfriend style, like a little bit loose, a little bit relaxed, but this back detail is really the only, that back and then the pocket are really the only two things that separate this from other, um, overalls that I've seen. Waist seam, I guess the straight leg maybe is a little bit different, but not, not too much. So fabrics are Chino, cotton blends, denim and twill. That makes sense. And then you need some notions, of course. She's got a six to probably 14 and then 16 to 24 on her size range. Finished garment measurement wise at the hip is what I'm looking at, um, three inches. So sort of close fitting through the hip and then straight down from there. That's the leg line. And then the waist has two inches. So yeah, fairly close fitting through the waist and hip and then straight line down. Not the most relaxed overalls you've ever seen, but yeah, six to 14 and then 16 to 24. Okay. That was an easy one to ease us into this collection. Now we're going to go into some dresses. We've got a women's knit dress, and I'm sure that there is a Mrs. version. It's like when there's a women's version, there's definitely a Mrs. version, but when there's a Mrs. version, there's not always a woman's version. So take that for what it is. But we've got size range on the women's side, 20 to 28, and then 30 to 38. Button front knit dress in two lengths have square shaped neckline, banding details, and sleeve variations. Views B and C have pockets and contrast bands. View B dress has a belt and purchased piping. Button front knit dress. Okay. So obviously with all of this contrasting, it's giving very like ladylike, you know, vibes. Um I think they did a good job with the pocket placement. This can be a little worrisome, especially for those of you that are in the women's 
category because you usually have a fuller bust and if these aren't placed right it can look a little weird especially with the buttons but I like how they turn them kind of diagonally that I think helps a ton and the button is like high it's like high up on the bust um, so that helps of course it's very flattering I mean it couldn't be more of like just the quintessential hourglass shape with this a-line skirt the buttons feel a little bit large but that's just me being a little bit picky then you've got um, a set-in sleeve, right? Yes, set-in sleeve with a little sleeve band. Now remember, this is all knit, okay? So should be a little bit close-fitting. So all of them have the banded detail. It's just a matter of whether or not you want to do that in a contrast fabric and have it stand out. This one is missing the waistband, though. And I think the sleeve is a little bit different too. Yep, and then there's another version where they did the contrast, but without the pockets and without the waistband. It really, it's surprising how different that looks than this, right? This might be the belt. I'll have to look at the line drawings, but that might be the separate belt that they're talking about. Yeah, pretty decent fit. I mean, almost always exclusively when I'm looking at women's patterns in the big four, they are not accounting for the height of the average full-size woman. Typically, you guys are short-waisted. And so they, I find the patterns tend to be a little bit long. And you can see that illustrated here. Not too bad. I've definitely seen it a lot worse. But I'm also looking at the hemline. It's nice and perpendicular to the floor. That's good. You don't want to see it scooping up. That would mean that there wasn't enough room for the bum. Okay, so yeah, it does look like, well, now I don't know. It looks like there's a waistband and a separate belt. That's that's a lot of horsepower. Um, stretch knits only, 35% stretch. Again, I'm just going to call it out when they do something that I like. <laughs> I'm going to keep praising them. That way they keep doing it and make it more of a rule rather than the exception. But thank you for putting the stretch percentage right here on the back of the envelope. It literally takes up less than an inch of space. So it's helpful for us, especially when we're shopping online. Okay. Cotton knits, interlock, ponty, rib knit. Yeah, I think it depends on the version you're making, right? And like the overall vibe that you're looking for. The version that they made out of this was definitely a little bit more structured. So that would be in the ponty and like the double knit range. Um, these other ones can be a little bit lighter weight for sure. Rib knit depends. Maybe if it's a thicker rib knit. <clears throat> All right. And then fusible knit interfacing. If you've never worked with that before. You can get knit interfacing from Heat and Bond. I love their knit interfacing. But you need the interfacing to stretch just like the fabric does. Otherwise, it's basically like using a woven fabric. So you have to get the stretch the interfacing. Okay. Um, and then just a bunch of buttons, I think. Yeah. Piping in one of them. So there's the size range again. And then this should be pretty close fitting. Yeah. So we've got a negative half inch in the bust. I love to see that. In the waist, we've got four inches of ease. That feels like a lot. Well, but that belt is really doing the most of the work on the sample that they made. So maybe four inches makes sense. Maybe it's supposed to be a little bit looser in the waist. What's the hip? The hip is six. Yeah. Okay. So it is supposed to be a little bit more of an A-line. They're having, they're drawing, here, let me show you the bigger, um, lines they're they're making it look like it scoops in at the waist a lot I, I really think that that's a little bit misleading I don't think it's as scoopy as this I think it's a little bit flatter to give you that four inches of ease it's a little bit more of a straight a line her version has the belt on it so it's giving her that cinched waist but there's definitely the ease in there um it's just being you know held in by the belt let's see the mrs version Okay, so looking at this, yeah, you can see a little bit more ease here. Is that four inches? Yeah, probably. Probably. And this is just like a really pretty sweater knit. I love how 
I don't know, something about this feels very uh, rich looking. I know it's not any different than how you do any other facing, but something about it just struck me as like, oh, maybe I was surprised that the underband is black also. Yeah. And then they put these right at her hip bones. Yeah, this is really chic for McCall's. I can also see it with like a higher boot for sure. And then look at these illustrations that they put together. So you've got just a solid color. I don't know. I kind of feel like this square neckline is a lot of work for it just to blend in. You know what I'm saying? Like that's hard to pull off. Um, and then there it is made like that's like the sample that they made for the women's version. Yeah, this one's definitely a lot more drapey. But you can see the ease here in the waist. And this is a rib knit too. All right, it's like a thinner rib knit. That's a little bit surprising to me that they could pull that off like that. But I guess I'm mostly because of the button band. But I guess it depends on your interfacing, right? And whatever this fabric is. You know? Which I don't think they, I don't think that, I guess that could also be a rib knit. There's a good chance it could be a rib knit too. Very nice. Very, very nice. Okay. <clears throat> Next. Oh, and there were sew alongs for those. Did I see that right? Hold on. Let's go back. Yeah. From Nefertiti Griggs. Look at her cute version with the lime green. That's fun. Okay. I wonder, I'm sure she tells what fabric she uses. And hers is kind of short. I don't know how tall she is, but none of these seemed mini, but. Okay, cool. So a lot of help with sewing that one as well, which for that square neckline, that will be helpful. Okay, we're gonna kind of scoot through these um, vintage patterns. It's a vintage 90s pattern. Pants with pleat variations forward pocket opening back darts with or without stirrups yes stirrups yes <laughs> yes yes stirrups oh my gosh wow is it weird to think that the 90s is vintage oh my gosh i think we i there's no reason stirrup pants shouldn't come back they're brilliant um, especially if you're putting them into boots or something. I don't know. I don't know why you would need them with just like flats like we used to do back in the day, but over boots? Absolutely. So this is actually um, a pattern for wovens. Gabardine, lightweight wool, wool blends, pinwheel corduroy, wool crepe, double, wool double knits. Wow, they're really leaning into like the winter pant of it all, but you can definitely make this out of like lightweight denim you can make it out of you know chino and twill and all those things okay that's fun 90s vintage my goodness there's another 90s vintage jacket loose fitting lined or unlined jacket has single front button closure slightly extended shoulders shoulder pads patch pockets optional blanket or overcast trim UB has shawl collar, BC has notched collar. I mean, this just looks like the same old kind of oversized blazers we've all been loving for the past couple of years. Fashion is cyclical, they say. I just really, really can't stand how they're going to go through all this trouble to reproduce a pattern and then not make a sample. like on a person today not not done up like the 90s either like how would you wear this as a modern person you know that's one thing that's really missing from these vintage patterns that i really do think if they went through the trouble of doing that people would see outside the box a little bit they would see yeah it's a vintage reproduction but it's today's style too you know i think that's what's missing i think sometimes even people see the vintage patterns on the listing and they just skip right over them because they think, oh, I don't want to look like a costume. 
you don't have to. You can definitely modernize both of those. Um, the pants and the jacket could definitely be worn today. Maybe that's something I should take on, right? Pick a vintage pattern from every collection, sew it up, and then like how you would style it for today's woman. Would you guys like that? Is that like interesting to lots and lots and lots of people? It can't just be like a few of you. It would have to be like <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of you to make that worth my time. Um, just something to think about though, I guess. Or I guess I could probably just do a video on like styling the vintage pattern. I don't actually have to make it up. That's true. That could be fun. Would you guys, would you guys be interested in that? Like if I showed you like Pinterest pictures or like, you know, um, listings from like other boutiques and stuff selling kind of like a oversized blazer and how they're styling it. Would that be helpful? Hmm. Something to think about. Okay. They're requiring or suggesting brocade. Oh, that's a choice. Uh, chalet. Anytime you see brocade and chalet next to each other, there's a problem. <laughs> that's no, you can't make you wouldn't make this out of chalet. You just wouldn't. That's strange. Brocade would just be like very, very specific. I guess it kind of would be for the holidays, maybe dressier. I don't know. Um, more so like corduroy, cotton, cotton blends, denim, gabardine, midweight linen for sure, synthetic suede, velvet or velveteen, which has a little bit of stretch to it. Wool, wool blends, wool crepe. Yeah, like your jacketing fabrics. And then your little button. And they also are going to put shoulder pads in here for sure, which don't knock shoulder pads, okay? They really help frame your body so that you have that little hourglass happening underneath everything. Um, And it's going to be really oversized, so really no sense in even looking at any of this. So, okay, cool. Yay, 90s. Oh, tracksuit. Okay. Men's jacket and pants. Jacket in two styles has kangaroo pockets, front zipper closure, and hood option. View B has contrast sleeve panel. Pull on pants have elasticized waist and pockets. View D pants have contrast on side panel. Both jacket and pants have purchased rib trim and stretch piping. Wow. Okay. Then there's another sew along with Nefertiti again. I wish they'd have showed her. I guess, although, did she make it for, like, a man? Not for herself? I don't know. But, yeah, it's like, you know, knock off Adidas. Adidas dupe. <laughs> I am definitely not cool enough to say that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, well, you have the contrast piping. You have your hood. You have this little inset panel. And then the striped rib. And then the pants are just pull on. They don't have a drawstring or anything, a slash pocket. And then you can also do this little mock neck. This is a really nice detail also, like without this like st big stripe, you can do the piping too, which I kind of like that look. That's kind of fun. Even if you did this in a separate color, that could be cool. Okay. All right. Fabrics are 35% stretch knits like athletic knits, French terry, interlock. Not really sure why they didn't include sweatshirt fleece, um, double knit, all that stuff. It doesn't have to be athletic. You can definitely make it like more cozy. All right. Next is this coat and vest. Vests are sticking around, you guys. If you don't have a vest, please make one. They are so much, they're such a great addition to your wardrobe you don't even realize. But high collar coat and vest have drop shoulders, side panel, pocket, and belt. Okay, yeah, high neck. This one has this Oh, they all have this like wrap over collar thing. So it can either be worn closed like that. Or you can open it and have this really big wide collar. These collars are super easy to sew. Don't be intimidated by that. 
drop shoulders. There's a lot of fabric in here being cinched in by this belt. Same thing with the sleeve. Yeah, and then this kind of looks like a dress a little bit. You could definitely maybe make, maybe add some more buttons, obviously, so that you're all locked and loaded. But, um, yeah, very chic. There it is all buttoned up. Right? Let's see what the boiled wool flannel, wool blends, wool flannel. Yeah, they're really leaning into the, like, fall and winter of it all. Um, you could definitely do this out of lighter weight fabrics. Um, yeah, it would just be like, I'm trying to think what, like, if there's a negative to doing that. I don't think so. Is it lined? Yeah, lined fabrics. Yeah, you could do it in some other things, some lighter weight things like cottons. Um, like, you could even do like a, a really thick double knit. It would be really pretty. Um, let's see here. And it's really oversized again, so we don't have to worry about the measurements too, too much. But yeah, I think you could think, if you're in a warmer climate, you could definitely think about the fabrics a little bit differently if you didn't want to do wool and have a lining and all of that. Did it have, um, let's go back, like a ton of interfacing. Uh, coat and belt lining interfacing, yeah. So it looks like the whole thing is interfaced as well. So you could, but there's probably better like springtime, like jackets that are released during the spring um, where the instructions would just be a little bit more clear. Is this the same dress as this for little girls? Because that's really sweet. It looks to be the same. That is so cute. All right. We skip over the kids stuff because I just don't know how to talk about kids stuff other than it's cute. You know what I mean? Like, look how sweet that is. And a lot of times I get jealous because I would want the kids' version in an adult version in a heartbeat. Okay, so no surprise here. Every fall, and you'll see this a lot more in the winter too, we get like a collection of sleepwear. I think it's because a lot of people like to make that for holiday gifts. This is a loose fitting wrap robe in two links, features patch pockets, tie belt, pullover, night shirt. Oh, it's a whole set. Okay. And top have sleeve variations. Pull on pants and shorts have elastic waist. So I recently made by accident a robe from Quilter Cotton. And I'm telling you guys, I have reached for that thing more than my fluffy regular robe. Something about like getting out of the shower and being like hot and kind of still sticky from the steamy shower and putting on that fluffy robe just feels icky to me. But grabbing that cotton one that's going to kind of like do a little bit of, you know, absorbing of any moisture and it's still very cool. I'm digging it. They're going to recommend like flannels for these, which is a similar vein, just a little bit warmer. But highly, highly consider, I recommend 10 out of 10 having like a non-fuzzy rope. I wouldn't have thought of it before. If I hadn't made it on accident, I probably never would have thought of it. But yeah big fan. This, however, who, whose man is wearing this? This is a, this is the sleep shirt. Dan would laugh me right out of the bedroom. He's, no, I'm not wearing that. That's insane. That's just like a lot. That's a lot even for a woman, not even like a, a gender thing. Like here for the robe, this is strange. And then your little shorts. Okay, fine, whatever. They do have a shirt version. I don't know who makes the dress. I don't know. Do, it, I mean, is that like a cold weather thing? People in Canada, are you guys wearing, like, is this like a regional thing? I've never seen any man in my life ever, fathers, grandfathers, boyfriends, none of that, wear something like this. Do, so let me know if you have. If it's normal somewhere else, I apologize. But that just seems so strange to me. It shouldn't be, though. Come on, wouldn't it be like the most comfortable thing? If I were a man, I would want one, I think. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's the shirt version. And then your little shorts. Cute enough in its own right. If you made it out of something like this um, railroad ticking looking fabric, you could wear that out. This is the same kid that was in the tracksuit. 
I don't know why he looks like they put his head on somebody else's body. I'm a little disappointed they didn't put him in the dress. It does have these little slash things here, so that's nice. Lots of pictures whenever you make a men's pattern, McCall's. What's up with that? Women get like three photos. And the men get like ten. Okay, Shally again. I don't know about a Shally men's. Don't get me wrong. It would be very, very comfortable. But I think most guys would feel naked. Chambray, cotton blends, cotton flannel, seersucker, soft cotton. Okay, and you can also make the robe in a lightweight wool and wool blends. Whoop. Okay, well, there's that. No sew along for this one. Maybe I should volunteer. Um, okay, so here is a lined vest. Easy to sew, unisex vest, an extra small through extra large vest, and eight styles have bean neckline variations and optional pockets and back buckled belt. Raven Maureen um, has made this. See how cute it is? It's very 90s, but cool. So, vest with patch pockets, vest with no pockets, vest with contrast. <laughs> color blocking, another contrast print with welt pockets on this one. This one has the trim and then no buttons and no pockets, just open. So yeah, mostly the options are going to be, the yeah, variations are going to be from the waist down. Although his is a lot higher and hers is lower, so somewhere in here is a high, it must be this one, yeah, because it has lots of buttons. Look how cute, though. I love them. And then if you paired this with those stirrup pants and a rider boot, come on. I know y'all remember those boots. Well, I don't remember the brand. I'm sure there was like a high-end brand and then everyone started knocking them off where they were like black and then had like a brown like six-inch chunk at the top, like a band. And you wore those over like beige leggings <laughs> wow 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 okay so here they all are again yay what's the back look like yep traditional little back so they've got back darts here and then this little belt situation this is looking a little feminine on him i will give it to you like i don't know why it's so loose in the back um if i were making this for a man i would tailor this a little bit more on a woman it looks fine but seriously if you cover up his head that looks like it could be a woman wearing this see it kind of looks normal on her but on him it looks a little frilly okay so again with the chalet what is going on oh sham okay i would ignore the chalet chambray cotton cotton blends denim flannel gabardine light right corduroy linen velveteen wool wool blends lined interfaced not suitable for diagonals that i think that's based on the cutting layout and then all the different buckles and buttons and all the things you need for each variation extra small to extra large Yep, and because it's unisex, they're basing it off of, like, chest measurements and stuff like that. Okay, cool. Try it. It doesn't take up much fabric, and I think you'll wear it a lot more than you realize. It's, like, the perfect transitional piece um, because, you know, it's not quite a jacket, but it's not nothing. You know, <laughs> it's not nothing. Okay, unisex jacket, a little windbreaker, speaking of the 90s. Uh, extra small through 2X jacket in three styles has dropped shoulders, long elasticized sleeves, front zipper closure and pockets, views B and C have contrast and front flap with jean snaps. View C has a hood. Okay. I mean, this is very much like vintage 80s, right? I think I even got a jacket like this from Goodwill once. Um, what's the brand? I can't remember. Very popular brand back then. 
Um, this version here feels very chic, right? Like you would definitely see like a heather gray with a darker gray or even like an olive green down here would be nice. This, I feel like they were kind of trying to make it a little bit younger because that's the McCall's demographic with these like bright colors. But if you're not into that, don't let that dissuade you. I think it could still be a really cool elevated looking jacket. Um, without all the crazy color blocking. I do like the zipper with the covered band though. That's that's a really nice detail. Collarless on that one. Yeah, that's the one she's wearing, but hers is color blocked. And then they did the red snap buttons. Yeah, I mean, he looks like he's ready to go fishing, right? Like, I like the big pocket. Again, the colors are a little bit wackadoodle, but if you pictured it all in, like, I don't know, navy or something, it could be more elevated than you realize. The length, whenever they do the unisex ones, too, the length on the women is always strange. On her, you can see they had to, like, tuck it a little bit so that it wouldn't be, like, below her butt, which... Now that I'm thinking about it, it wouldn't be the worst thing. It needs to either be that long or short. This midway thing is strange for women. For men, whatever. Yeah, nylon ripstop, twill for your fabrics. But you could also do, I mean, you could make this out of just about anything other than chalet. You wouldn't make it out of chalet. Um, I'm thinking of like, even like lightweight wools, you could do it out of. It doesn't have to be so sporty. Maybe that's what I'm trying to get at here. And then lined and interfaced. And then here's all your like zippers and snaps and all that cording. Okay. I think that's like three unisex patterns so far. That's pretty cool. And I kind of always look at the men's patterns as unisex too, because like there's no reason we couldn't make this if we wanted as women. Here is the coat and vest that goes with this. So this is the Mrs. version. This is the women's version. Yep. Lovely. Love these little beige and gray samples. Yeah, a gray vest. Give me a break. Yes, that would be awesome. Okay. I mean, fit really isn't coming into play in this collection simply because like everything seems so oversized. Oh, until now. Okay. So knit dress and two links by Brandy Joan. Long sleeve wrap front dress in two lengths has square neckline, bra shelf, narrow hem skirt, and self ties. Okay, cute. I mean, that's that's short. Okay, that's real short. Um, but look how pretty this one is. I think we, there's probably a middle ground here somewhere. And also, are, what are we doing to keep this up? Because there's a shelf bra, so she's not wearing a bra. Are we just doing the tape thing? Like, otherwise, how is that staying on? Yeah, there's not even any tie in the back to hold up the sleeve. So there's got to be, like, a trick to keeping it up, right? Let's see. It does look a little bit like figure skatery, so be careful about that with the fabrics you choose. You don't want to be too glittery because then you're like ice capades. 50% stretch, interlock jersey, rib knit, sweater knits. Okay. Bra band elastic, and then two and a half yards of quarter inch elastic. So is there a little bit of elastic in the shoulder seam? That would help. 
I hope that they've addressed that, right? I hope that there's some kind of like trick or tip or something about keeping them up because that is a really pretty neckline, but it's frustrating because when it never stays up, like that's just annoying pulling on it all the time. All right, we've got negative bust ease by half an inch. We've got two inches of positive ease in the waist, but remember it ties, so you can like fiddle around with that a little bit. And then your hip has three inches of ease. Yeah. I think it's really sweet. Um, so along included. Yeah, there's no way that's not staying on. There's no way that's staying on, I guess is my point. What I'm trying to say. I kind of like this. I would rock this. Maybe you have to find the middle ground on the length a little bit. This is just too short for me, but it is really pretty. I do like how it's so fitted and then the little overlay skirt is just kind of like, no, I'm sweet. <laughs> like, I'm not sexy, I'm sweet, but really it's sexy. Okay, now we have, oh boy. 70s top and skirt sewing pattern stitched trim top with puff sleeves and two links ties in front short sleeve top has elastic in casings okay skirt in two links has shaped front seaming and back zipper oh stop that's actually really cute <laughs> i couldn't tell from far away what was going on and two, they like color blocked it in a weird way, but like, that's really cute. I love a little tie crop top and a skirt. And then they just like, okay, I'm going to go to the office. So let me just put on a button down underneath. <laughs> this here though is super flattering. These types of skirts, they look really good on everybody. Cute. I kind of like, uh oh, I kind of like that. Again with the chalet, although this one you could probably actually make it out of chalet. So, and then chintz, which I don't even know if they really make that anymore. It has a new name or something. Denim, lightweight cotton, lightweight wool, linen, wool crepe. I guess that'd be a choice. I guess if you're going to make it more of like a skirt and a jacket. And then the top has a ton of ease but it's hard to tell how they measure those tie front tops i think that the ease is depending on how you tie it right and then the waist has two and a half inches of ease so awesome cuter than i thought yeah that's fun i think that's sweet i like that one But when you guys see that, do you see how that could be more modern? Do you see how that looks like what's in the stores these days or no? Let me know. Oh, look how beautiful this is, robe and nightgown. Oh, I love this. Vintage 1970s robe and nightgown by Laura Ashley Naturally. Um, High-waisted front wrap robe has neck and sleeve ruffles, tie belt drawn through seam opening, sleeves have gathered cap and lower tucks, High-waisted, back-button nightgown has ruffle. Back-button nightgown, I don't love that. Bias tape drawstring drawn through casing ties in front. Okay. So here's the little high-waisted robe. I love that. And look at the sleeve with the pin tucks and the ruffles. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And then look at these. These are so sweet. I mean, why can't that be like a dress dress? I have some vintage sheets. This is coming. I'm getting this one. For sure. I would wear that to death. Till I die. I do want to see the back. Okay. The I want to see the buttons. I got to look at the bigger one. Okay. So Batiste, uh, uh, Shally, uh, uh, cotton blends, cotton flannel, cotton knits, lightweight cotton, synthetic jersey. Yeah, Batiste is kind of like cotton. It, it reads like cotton, even though it's not. Shally, yeah, you could do it out of Shally for sure. 
And then here's your notions. Only extra small to medium. Is that for real? Maybe I won't be getting this. What does that even mean? Finished garment measurements 36 to 42 in the bust. I mean, barely making that cut. And then the waist is fine. With the hip, they aren't giving us the hip. I guess it's so wide. Even, I barely fit into this, and I'm like a midsize girl. So that is so strange. Let me see. I mean, y'all couldn't. Oh, this is frustrating. Okay. Here's the back, though, with the three little buttons. But I don't think you have to put those in. You could definitely, I don't know, a zipper would be worse. I would probably just figure out how to just pull it on. Make the neckline opening bigger or something. But it is super cute. I think if you're going to spend the time, guys, to do an authentic vintage reproduction, you need to resize, right? Like, okay, that's all I'm going to say about that before I get, like, really angry and take up 20 minutes of this video ranting about something that we all agree on, right? I'm just, like, preaching to the choir over here. Okay, so this is a another Laura Ashley. I wonder what the sizing is on this one. 8 to 16 and then 18 to 26. I, I mean, why do it on this one and not the other one? No idea. Vintage 70s. And look, they made, okay. So maybe all of my, <laughs> this is why I rant in these videos because every once in a while, someone listens, someone hears me. They did, they made it. They made a version. Maybe because it's Laura Ashley and like they, like because Laura Ashley actually produced these dresses, they could just find it and put the model in it. I don't know. Um, but it helps. It helps so much. You guys have no idea. Top and skirt by Laura Ashley. Top A or B ties at back of neck, like a halter top. And it has buttoned bands down the center front. View B has pleated ruffle. Okay. Gathered skirt A or B has pockets in side front seams. And left side zipper. View B has ruffle in side front seams and lower ruffle. If there's if there's nothing that Laura Ashley was ever good for it was ruffles okay she put ruffles in everything um but yeah look how sweet the little ruffles here your little button band you have the little side front pockets and then another ruffle and I think this one has like where the seam is exposed that's fun this is really really cute odd choice I think for fall but really cute I even love this planer version remember it's a top and a skirt right so they're separates I love this you don't have to do the halter. You could definitely just sew it into the back like a normal strap. But doesn't it help to see, like if you had just seen her and another version of her with like ruffly things drawn on, would you have thought it could be as cute as this? I mean, I don't really appreciate the low rise. The belly button showing is, is a lot. But again, they're going for a younger demographic. But for those of us that aren't belly button worthy, uh, worthy is a, a, not a good word. Those of us that don't like showing our belly button for whatever reason, um, the high-waisted pants also look good. High-waisted jeans or you could do like a flare would be really cute. I do think the skirt's probably the best choice though. But I mean, yeah. Oh, and then here's the skirt to show that it separates. Right, with a little ruffle on the skirt um, pocket. And then you can see that exposed ruffle, ruffle here. Sweet little skirt. Okay, here's the back. A lovely. We have a side zipper, right? You know what they said? So there's a ruffle here. And then this is all just, uh, is that a pleat maybe? I love this one. No, there's no pleat in the back. I'm not entirely sure what, what was going on there. But yeah, really cute. Chambray, chalet, <laughs> cotton blends, lightweight corduroy. Lightweight corduroy. I don't know about that. Lightweight cotton, linen, and muslin. Interfacing, lightweight sew-in, woven or non-woven. Or you can you can do iron on. I think it's probably just in the waistband, right? 
and you're facing, oh, no, a yard or so. Who else could it be? I think probably the this top band, the waistband. Yeah, maybe you would need a yard to get it on the green. And then, yeah, a little one yard wonder up to one and a half yards for the top. Love that. And then no finished garment measurements that we are used to because it's a Laura Ashley pattern, I guess. Okay, and now we're getting into costumes, which I'm going to skip over. Plush nesting animals. I don't even know what that means. All you mothers out there. Oh, nesting, like they nest into each other. Okay, got it. Um, some zipper cases, an apron with a giant flower or a heart. Wow. Okay, and this was our early fall collection. Yep, so if you haven't seen that video, that is in the that's in the description box. Or in the playlist. Yes, can't forget her. Okay. That is going to do it for McCall's Fall. What do we think? I, I'm a little bit confused again as to who McCall's girl is, right? Some of these feel like very mature and then some of them feel very young. Um, so if simplicity, I guess if uh, maybe Nomi's trying to take over like the younger, I don't know. It's a little all over the place. Um, like, it's the same person who's making this also making this? I don't think so. Is the same person who's making this windbreaker also the same person who's, you know, making her man like a floor-length nightgown? I don't think so. So that's the only thing that's got me a little bit like, hmm, what's going on here? But um, Brandy Joan is certainly helping keep things cool around here. But there are some really pretty patterns um, maybe this is just going to end up being like the pattern company for all people, right? For all styles, all ages, all everything. It's just a little bit of a mix of everything. But I want to know what you guys think. Um, which patterns are you loving? Which which are you going to add? I know this collection's been out for a minute. Have you guys already got some? Um, let me know in the comments section below. Otherwise, that's going to do it for me today, y'all. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all very soon. Bye.